60 Minutes producer Rome Hartman and Bill Whitaker discuss their story on what they call the cruelest disease you've never heard of. I had never heard of FTD, frontotemporal dementia. Had, I had, had never heard of it either. Nor had I. In, in, in what way did you see the cruelty of this disease? It hits people in the prime of their lives. It hits families in their prime. It, it makes you do strange, strange things. You might go over to a, a table in a restaurant and take the food off of a stranger's plate. Um, you say totally inappropriate things, and before you know it, you're living in this upside-down world. The other cruelty is that there's currently no treatment, and there's nothing that can be done, and the outcome is always death. There's much hopeful research going on, but at the moment, um, there's nothing there's that nothing. can be done. Mm. There's nothing. And uh, we're talking primarily about the behavioral variant, but with the speech variant that we saw with um, Tracy Lind, the cruelty there is that it's taking away the part of her that makes her who she is. And before the onset of FTD, language and speech came easily and naturally to you. Oh, yeah. Uh, in, 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 yeah, I mean, I, you know, my, my whole life was about language. So they said we're, we can go if you guys are ready? Sure. Yeah. We see a, a walk and talk that you tried to film with Tracy and Emily, and uh, she struggled. Uh, she struggled quite a bit. Is it difficult for you to be out here with the traffic and the people and... Cool. Yes. We were on a street corner in San Francisco. It was just a horrible confluence of events. The, the wind picked up, knocked over a sign, a bus pulled up and made a loud okay? breaking noise. It, it, it's the lights and it's the sounds. All of this was going on at the time that she was trying to cross the street and she panicked. Oh! Sorry. Is too much? No. Aside from being shocked at how devastating this disease is, I was most impressed with the caregivers. Hey, honey. How are you doing? I brought a, I brought a friend of mine, and I told him they need to bring the big camera. This Hi. is Bill. How are you? Very nice to meet you. You interview Mark Johnson at the nursing facility, and you saw close up what this disease has done to him. You understand why you're here? No. Think you'd be okay at home? Yeah. It was very difficult, uh, sad. As she told us about her visits, they have four kids, uh, four very young kids. Brian, you gotta take your backpack off, honey. He'll kiss the kids. Then after just a couple of minutes, he's done. Yeah. He wants them to leave. He did that with you. The same. Yeah. It's like, Bye. I don't want to make you uncomfortable. Okay, I see ya. <laughs> okay. Okay, see ya. <laughs> Mark, it's real nice to meet you. Then you can go lay in bed for a little bit, okay? Okay. And I talked to Amy a lot about that in the days and weeks leading up to it. And Whether to interview Mark. Well, she, we knew it wasn't going to be an interview. It was an encounter. I mean, mm -hmm. because he's not really there to be interviewed. But I think she felt that it was important if the idea is to raise awareness of this disease, mm. you sort of have to see somebody in the throes of it. Yeah. Is that typical? Yeah. The cameraman and sound man came out shaken. And it is hard to watch. It's hard to watch. Let's go. These women in our piece are selfless and determined. And, you know, they get knocked down, they get back up and so full of love, so caring. It's really hard. It's hard to manage it. I wish I could be here all the time, and I can't be, so. Yeah. You, you have a partner who is no longer a partner. Um, Amy, for one, um, is so compassionate and so involved and so determined to give him everything she has that, um, She'll never give up on him. <sighs> Thank you.
Thank you.